What's up YouTube, it's Big Rob here, and today we're gonna to be doing another vMix tutorial video on how to do some things in vMix. Today, we're gonna to be talking about triggers and shortcuts. Specifically, how do we use triggers to have vMix help us out? Uh, you can use triggers to do a lot of different things in vMix. Today, specifically, we're gonna be showing you how to do how to use triggers to do a uh, off-air transition to an on-air transition, how to trigger different audio sources to come and go with different video sources, bring different overlays in. But the main thing we're talking about today is how we're handling our pre-service. This is for a church, so I'll be saying pre-service. Or if you're doing this for a live stream that's not a religious or a nonprofit, a pre-show. But how we're triggering vMix to handle a uh, non a royalty free, non copyrighted soundtrack that we are handling while we still have a copyrighted soundtrack playing in the venue or in the worship space. So that's what we're talking about today. If you have never worked with vMix before, uh, this video might be over your head. So uh, it might be a good idea to just get into a watch one of my earlier videos on a like a basic intro tutorial to vMix. A lot of things we'll be talking about today in vMix. I'm going to assume that you have been working in vMix for a little bit and you kind of know um, the basics of how vMix is structured and how it works. So before we get into the video, let me explain what is going on at my workstation so we know what we're looking at here. Uh, so I'm remote, I'm remoted into a uh, sanctuary. You can see the lights are off, the camera feeds are still up. I am using uh, remote software to access a uh, front of house and a broadcast system in a sanctuary. So on this monitor here, this is my control monitor for the vMix computer. This is my multi-view monitor for the vMix computer. This is the control monitor for my graphics computer, which is uh, in this instance Proclaim, but in your instance could be Media Shout, uh, could be Pro Presenter, could be PowerPoint for all I know. But whatever software you use in your church or your production to generate your graphics, your lower third lyrics, so on and so forth. Now, the way this system is configured is we have vMix 4K. Uh, we're using version 23 there, and we are on a PC-based setup. Uh, we get our camera feeds from a Blackmagic ATEM uh, Mini. So this is uh, coming in via USB through the uh, Blackmagic driver. We've got four uh, 4K cameras plugged into that. Obviously the Mini is not a 4K system, but all the cameras are 4K now. Uh, the live audio mix comes from a dedicated uh, USB line from a dedicated audio console. So in this instance, they're using a PreSonus Studio Live Series 3 32 channel console. That console is whole purpose is just mixing audio for their live stream. So they've got their band microphones. You can see the, some of the instrumentations up on stage there already. Um, so that is, is how that audio gets there. We also have what's called the pre-music post pre-service post-service music loop here. I'm going to show you all about that. That is an audio uh, feed that is generated within this computer. So this is kind of a hybrid setup. Uh, I know a lot of you guys might have multiple capture devices or capture cards that have multiple cameras in them uh, for your vMix setup. This was a, uh, a budget build. So instead of spending $1,000, $1,500 on a, you know, four input card, uh, they bought a $300 Blackmagic design uh, four camera HDMI switcher and plug it in via USB 3.0 and then they have four cameras on this system. So that is how this rig is set up. So let's talk about setting up, first of all, shortcuts. And all your shortcut settings can be accessed within the settings tab. This is gonna run a little slow. It's gonna be a little glitchy because we are um, remote desktoped into this system. So here's my list of shortcuts. Uh, and you can see my list of shortcuts here in my web controller. So I have a stream start stop preview. So that's going to start our stream to Facebook or whatever your custom server location is. The standby. So standby is going to put up the standby there. Uh, the pre-service is going to put up the pre-service loop from the graphics computer, which you can see is running over here. Uh, the go live is going to bring in the camera. The lyrics is gonna overlay their lower third lyrics. And then this is gonna put up the pastor's name, his lower third graphic. Um, and those shortcuts are accomplished by going into the settings menu here, going to the shortcut tab, and then you just assign a numerical or a letter key on your keyboard and you can add it in here. And when you add a sort, when you add a shortcut in, uh, like let's just, add something real quick here. Uh, we're gonna add the bug. So we're gonna go overlay and our bug is on number four. So we're gonna go overlay input four. Then we're gonna select which source or which uh, uh, element we want to be there. So we're gonna be the PNG. We can name it bug. 
and then we can say okay and now that is going to be there so we hit the a key that bug is going to go up and down and that bug control is now going to be listed in the um web controller as well now i have to restart vmix for that to take place so i'm not going to restart vmix we're going to leave that alone now the next thing i want to talk about is using triggers and this is where I think vMix really shines. Um, you can use shortcuts to trigger elements that trigger other things. So let's look at this trigger, this element here, or this source, which is the video standby loop. Um, if we click on the settings and go to triggers, you'll see here I have a plethora of triggers set up um, here. And you can do all different types of things. So this is set up for the on transition in, input overlay one, two, three, and input overlay number four are turned off. So what that's gonna do is, if I'm in the middle of service, right? And I've got, we got the camera up here, and I've got the lower third graphics up, and then all of a sudden we need to go to off air very quickly. When I hit quick play, it automatically is gonna take all that off the screen and put that graphic up. What it's also gonna do is it's going to turn off the audio from this guy right here. So that board's not connected, so it's grayed out. But when you come here, it automatically mutes the master bus. So as I leave this transition, you see I have another trigger here. It says on transition out, master audio on, master audio bus on, right? So as we transition away from this, you'll see the audio for the master bus gets turned back on. And you can really program this, the sky's the limit. Your imagination and how you need your system set up is really gonna dictate how you are gonna set the system up. So let me show you an example of how I'm using triggers to work for my benefit, to make life a little easier for me. So one of the biggest problems with church live streams and with just live streaming in general is making sure that you don't uh, have any copyright infringement claims on your stream, right? So you don't want to sit there and get that dreaded notification from YouTube or from Facebook that you are either your streams are muted or you've been demonetized. And so one of those solutions is you use royalty free or copyright free music. In the world of church services, we always like to play familiar music to our congregants before they are coming in as a pre-service. We call it the pre-service loop. You see there. That is labeled pre-service loop. You can also see there's an, also another input right next to it. This is virtual video deck or virtual teaching. I'll explain to you why there are two sources there because those sources have different triggers on them. So if we click this audio um, button right here, this is the audio that plays pre-service in the sanctuary. Uh, obviously we can't play that kind of music on our live stream because it's copyrighted and we'll get a copyright nick on our live stream. We'll get muted on Facebook, so on and so forth. So we have to use what they call royalty free or copyright free music. In a church setting where you necessarily don't have people who are uh, tech savvy or are professional in mixing video, it's, a, it's the more you can streamline and automate things, the better. But let's look and see exactly how I am using the triggers here to control my music. Now, in the pre-service that's going on, the audio from this computer right here is going to be coming through this source, right? Because this is the mix from the, from the sanctuary, from that board in the sanctuary. And that mix might accidentally have the music that doesn't need to be in there okay because the broadcast guy could be listening to it for any other reason so we want to make sure that pre-service that is not coming through the system at all right so on our broadcast this is muted so it's really simple on transition in i want to audio on my pre slash post music loop and i want to transition in audio off my live stream audio mix i also on transition in want to load my bug or my shield logo we call it a bug so the way that looks right right now is that remember on this transition here this is our master uh please stand by right so nothing is happening there's no sound there's no video other than this little loop right here so remember on transition out on this we're going to turn the master audio on and we're going to turn the master headphone bus on so what that looks like is as we leave this and we enter this we leave this which is up and we go to this source here so now my audio is playing from my royalty free music loop that's playing and i don't have to worry about the sound coming through from this because 
it is muted in vmix right my little bugs up right here and everything's good to go and we're going along and then all of a sudden let's say it's time for the service to start so we're going to transition into this live feed so let's see what happens when we transition to our live feed on transition into the live feed we want to turn off the pre post music loop and we want to turn on the live stream audio what's going to happen when we transition into this we have turned off this audio down here and we have turned on which isn't active we have turned on this audio stream from here now if you didn't have these triggers set up every time you would transition into this you'd have to come down here and turn the audio on and every time you transition to this you'd have to turn that audio off turn that audio on manually setting up the triggers makes it very easy for one person to remember shortcuts so when i click on we are going to be in standby 20 minutes before service we're going to go into our pre-service loop so what using these triggers and these shortcuts do is really gives you a consistent product from week to week and gives you a consistent product between operator to operator. Um, even though we're tech people, right? And, and a lot of us enjoy knowing all the different ins and outs of, you know, I need to trigger this when this happens and this graphic needs to go up at a certain time. It's nice that we can program this even for us technically you know, inclined people, we can program this to make our lives a lot easier. Not only does it make our lives a lot easier, but when you are in a volunteer base and you might not have the same person sitting at this terminal from week to week during your services, uh, it makes it very easy for people to understand that standby is standby and pre-service is pre-service and go live is go live. And it, it, it makes it consistent from person to person, but it keeps you consistent from week to week. So let's talk about the coolest part of how this is all set up and why I truly feel that vMix should always be the final like tool in your live streaming setup. Whether you're using a Blackmagic uh, ATM HD TV studio switcher, a Ross Carbonite, a BMD Mini, or you're actually using vMix as your camera switching system with multiple input cards or multi-channel input cards, why I think vMix is the coolest setup. And it's because of its level of customization. And let's just look at that level of customization for a second here. So I, and all you probably noticed, I have two different sources that are the same source, but they're two different sources here. One is named a pre-service loop and one is named a video deck VRT teaching. So those serve two different purposes, even though they're the same source, two different purposes. Obviously this one is my pre-service loop and I have my trigger set up like I showed you guys earlier on transitioning my audio and pulling overlays in and out, right? So we are live and a video package goes to play and okay, we gotta go to the video package. Now, if I only have this one input set up, right? I don't have this other input set up over here. When I transition to this video package, well, the audio from my video package isn't gonna come out because this is triggered with triggers and set up to turn the live audio from the sanctuary mix off and to turn my pre-service loop on. So that's not gonna work. But if we mirror the input and we set up triggers on this input to turn, make sure the pre-service music is turned off every time we transfer to that, even if it's already off, it double, double, double checks to make sure it's off. It double checks to make sure that the sanctuary or the live feed from the soundboard is on. Well, when I transition to this to play, we hit audio coming from the sanctuary. Now we don't right now because the board's off, okay? But it would sound like this. So that video would be playing, obviously, okay? Versus when we transition, quick play to this, it turns on the pre-service loop music. So the next question some of you are all probably gonna have is, Robert, that's all cool, the triggers and everything, but where's your pre-service music coming from? Well. I will show you. Well, this is the beauty in using a software-based setup as your final polishing piece on your live stream setup. We have a piece of software installed on this computer that is called VirtualBox Audio Virtual Cable. And what it is, it is literally like a patch panel within your computer. For you audio guys, you'll get that. But it, it creates a virtual sound device that you can send things to, and then you can then take those things and insert them into other software programs. So for example, our live stream pre-service royalty-free music 
lives in VLC in a playlist. And VLC is never touched. It's minimized. It's never paused. It's never stopped. It plays 24-7, 365, forever and a day, lonely by itself in the corner. But what VLC does in the background is what makes this whole system work so awesome. So we take VLC and we output VLC to the dedicated virtual audio device that we created with virtual audio cable. Then we come back into vMix and we grab the audio device here, the output of the virtual audio box. And boom, we have created a virtual audio input a input that has music playing 24 seven, 365 all the time. It is one less thing for our volunteer to have to worry about. The music just plays. If we want to, as a technical director or the worship leader, change the music in that list during the week, well, we could do that. But the tech team on Sunday mornings doesn't have to worry about that music. It's just automatically done for them. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today in this video. Obviously, there are other things uh, to talk about in vMix. Um, I have some other videos that are up uh, online that I can link to. Uh, one of the main ones is talking about um, lyric overlays. So how we get a image that looks like this, right, from our uh, graphics computer to end up looking like this on our uh, overlay video feed uh, for our lyrics. Um, so I have another video like that and maybe I'll do another one, an updated video because we're doing things a little differently uh, now. But um, if you guys are like new to this live streaming thing, you're trying to figure out what the best route to go is, uh, vMix really is a piece of software that you can start off in infancy with and can handle the most basic single camera, single audio device, um, live stream you can handle. And then you can get into some serious, serious stuff where you are like triggering multiple things to happen at one time. This is just the coolest software that you can get your hands on for live streaming. And it does so much more than what I'm showing you right now. There's a social media side to this where you can have like, I mean, it's just, it's cool. I'm, I'm, I have to stop or we'll be here for hours. Thanks for watching the video guys. I really appreciate you sticking with me. I know I was probably kind of all over the place. Hopefully I was able to edit this down where it was a reasonable video for you to watch. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and uh, yeah, keep live streaming guys. See you later.